Hello everyone, welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for this edition of YBM Cast Youth Baseball Talk. Big weekend, we had a lot of fun out at Ozzy's. Uh, as you can see over there, we gave away another top award. We had our player of the game. A couple of young men headed over to Lafayette High School. We're going to recap a little bit of that from the weekend. Um, and we got a lot of fun stuff. But uh, joining us, as always, on the broadcast, but uh, in his uh, dark room. <laughs> He's over working hard. He's got everybody. He's getting set up. Is Mitch Thomas. Mitch, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, sir. Uh, it's yeah, a little different setting in here. Trying to, uh, we actually have some people in the facility, and and uh, so I was finding a dark room. Plus, I'm sick of the sun. I was out there all day uh, Sunday um, for our 15s and 17U. Uh, fortunately, I had the ability to coach both teams, but from about 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. So it was a it was a long day for us. It usually is, and, and you know this is the best time of year to get work done in the facility too. Correct? Oh yeah, uh, you know it's it's just like anything else. Uh, this time of the year gets slow for for most uh, facilities. You know, people that are coming in or college kids. Uh, you know, getting their work in during the day. Uh, we got some fitness people coming in here and and training. Um, and, and then you know hours get reduced, and uh, you don't want to do it in the middle of June and July because. You know, we don't have AC in here, so it's it can, it can get 110 plus degrees in here. And ain't no windows. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got big bay doors though, but um, and, and and a nice big exhaust fan, but that can only do so much to you know the full side of the building. You go to the back side of one of our cages, and you're like, holy cow, it's 15 degrees difference if you if you stand in the back of the cage. So when I throw BP, I don't go to the middle; I just stay up front. <laughs> We're gonna flip the nets keep the wind on us you know i don't blame you man i don't blame you but hey that's why you can get outside you can go in the morning go to a cage in the morning outside it's always good and we've had some really nice weather I, yesterday was beautiful uh we were at ozzy's um doing the ball game by 14 U championship uh, nick post's uh, squad st louis prospects got back to the championship game yesterday against uh coach hewlett's uh, midland bandits and uh, it was a really good game. It really was. Got away from uh, the prospects a little bit there at the end. But a uh, couple of really good pitchers. Um, Cole Mann for the prospects. And uh, our top award winner, uh, Blake uh, Lansbaum. Uh, both these guys pitched very well. And the one young man, Blake Lansbaum, Mitch, his slider had a good six-inch run away. <laughs> i got people <laughs> what can yeah. i come in no Sorry. wait what huh what no yeah i'm on tv man that's the universal gesture right it's like no we're good like don't come on in here she wanted to come in and say hi we got a couple kids coming in uh doing some lessons uh, so i'm like no nah, stay out so what part of that and i apologize you for anybody that that if <laughs> if if you see me disappear like that i do apologize i uh we we are you know you brought it up earlier i i am installing we're, we're installing that machine finally and getting cables ran and stuff like that so uh we're preparing for that that's that's why i'm not in studio yeah it's fine but uh, did you catch what i had said there i did yeah um and you know the the there again I think last year being a part of this this program and then also playing 14U, you start to see that change where those guys are starting to fool with those pitches, you know, and and we feel that it's healthy enough for them to throw them, um, and, and you're you're seeing them tinker, right? And then and then they tinker all winter long, and then all of a sudden they develop this dirty pitch, and it's like, all right, this guy might be for real, you know, and and you have to pay attention and and. Um, this is what I love about it because some of these kids will be freshmen next year in a, in a conference that, you know, that I, that it's close to me. And, uh, I get excited for it to see I, these kids grow year to year. And I think this is what's interesting when you're talking about development, you know, and you the pitching lessons and things. If this young man, he wasn't, his fastball was good. Wasn't just overpowering, but if 
that pitch stays that good with that much run. Um, that's and he gets a low eighties, even mid eighties fastball. He's going to be a very tough, tough, tough high school pitcher. Well, and, we we all know that they can't hit off speed in high school, so. <laughs> Every every high school kid says they can only hit the guy that throws ninety miles an hour because they can't hit a guy eighty because they don't know how to make adjustments. So part of development is maybe we should focus on that this off season. But um, yeah, that's here nor there. I love I love watching these young guys, like you said, just develop and and if they can get to a certain spot. But I notice those guys throwing strikes, and that and that that'll allow you to throw that off speed and get those swing and miss pitches when they're out of the zone. Right. Right. And, and I think that's, that's, what's great about this. And it was, uh, and then, uh, our player of the game, uh, was Noah Johnson. I don't know. You weren't with us at Cinco de Mayo, were you? Either. I was not. Yeah. And, uh, we saw Noah Johnson and he, he really had – he played – he roamed center field. He's got really good speed. He's tall. He's six foot. Maybe a, he's right around my height, maybe a little bit more. Um, lanky kid, rangy. Uh, made another very good catch yesterday or uh, on Sunday. Excuse me, not yesterday. I'm losing what day it is, Lauren. I did the same thing. I was thinking I, I woke up this morning. I even talked to you yesterday. It was like, it's Monday. I'm good. You know, it's like we got <laughs> another day for the show. I had to worry about it. And then you texted me and I was like, oh, crap, I got to remember. <laughs> it is actually Tuesday. Yes, it is Tuesday. and All uh, day. <laughs> but he was our player of the game. I, I really had a double. Uh, both of these guys are going to Lafayette. Um, so I think that's a really interesting thing. And look at these guys that are playing on these two different teams, different skill sets and this and that, but had both talented guys heading to a very, uh, high end program and yeah, uh, talent rich, right? Right. So, you know, it's, it, what, what do you say? You know, like you say, the rich get richer in some of those respects and you see, and that's what I love to see. So we're going to see, and these names are there, Noah Johnson, Blake Lansbaum, we're going to get to watch them freshmen grow, and, and we can follow them into high school. I love this part of it, Mitch. A hundred percent. You know, I, I keep thinking, you know, week to week, uh, you know, periodically when I have a chance to open my brain up a little bit more than just what's going on here and in my daily life to f figure out how we can get these younger teams uh, you know, growing into the same from this 14U to the high school team. I know it's a little bit more difficult because there's more teams and, um, the, you know, they're scattered throughout, uh, you know, the area and stuff like that. And and I know that's the goal of, of what you're trying to do and this show in general is to is to do that. Um, you know, for me, it's this it's just an awesome age because I'm involved in it. Right. And I, I've, I've watched the growth from the 14s to the 15U and the just in that maturity level, um, it, it's it's uh, really awesome to see on who who's actually worked and who and, you know who who has worked in high school, um, you know, and, and even if they didn't play every day, uh, how were they preparing? And so uh, it's actually really neat to see the growth uh, and the education in these young people, and and that's why I like this fourteen U age group so much. Um, you know, personally, is is the watching that one year difference of practicing two times a week, playing a couple of games, then practicing five or six times a week and then playing, you know, six times or uh, having events six days a week. So you're seeing kids be student athletes um, and, and just the, the level of maturity and IQ just from being around the sport daily. Um, it, it's, it's a big time growth. And folks, we get a chance to do this show because of sponsors uh, like uh, Prime Sports Midwest and, uh, you know, great store over there. Check out this video real quick from uh, Prime Sports Midwest.
So we opened up in 2019 and basically there was a void in the area. I mean, it, we saw that there was an opportunity to have a retail store where people could come in and actually touch and feel the tangible object that they're buying. We appreciate Rick Benz and uh, Sal McGee over there. Champions Village, 1550 Ocello Drive. Go check it out. Go find a glove. Go, you know, the hitting. I know everybody's in the season right now, but if you need accessories and whatnot, that's the place to go. Um, but, Mitch, you know, as we're talking about the development and the growth and the movement of these things, and we're, we're talking about kids here when we're, we're out at the ballpark like Saturday. This is what's always fun to me. Um, we got a team up from uh, Tennessee, Nashville area, East Cobb. East Cobb Astros have a program. You know, they're they're expanding. Like, this is where baseball's going. It um, is. It, it's where it's uh, youth baseball is going. Right, wrong, and different. Like it or don't like it, it's where it's at. And I think there's got to be some things that we will talk about as we move through this, and I think they're, they're important conversations to have. How we keep a level level head, basically, about ourselves. But getting a chance to talk to these young men, you know, getting a chance, see where the development is. This is why in these interviews, and folks, a uh, little, little plug here, go to the website youthbaseballmidwest.com forward slash youth dash baseball. It's the one Lauren's got on the screen right now. <laughs> Go watch the interviews from Saturday because I love asking the questions to these kids, Mitch. You know, what are you learning? What are you learning? What, how are you, uh, what are you learning about the game of baseball? What is Coach uh, talking to you about? I love these questions because you 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 get the motors running, <laughs> and you know what's Coach saying to me, and it's nervousness, and they're fun. But you know what? I'm getting a lot more thoughtful answers than I'm than I'm getting the nervousness. So there's a lot of times these kids they are they are hearing the words. Um, I think as coaches we need to, especially on the youth side from. As we said, especially 9, 10, 11, and 12. What are we doing in practice? Do we have a practice plan? Are we putting these things in place? You say, as you said, two weeks, you know, two or two practices a week. What's your practice plan? What is the development process? Well, you know, these kids are 14 now or they're 12 now. You know, we can just let them throw. No, continue the mechanical drills. Do some break and throw drills. Keep the mechanics. Keep walking through. Step into the throw. Take that one step, back foot throw. Mechanics. Do the motions. Be. I think that is the key at, at every age level. And then you set those. You set those mechanics properly. Into high school, you hope they remember to keep doing it right i don't think you even stop then um there's a reason why you still have these every days or these dailies that they do all the way up to the big leagues you know you 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 see with some of the things on mlb or espn that's you know highlighted uh, guys like uh, ron washington and those guys that um you know we'll go out before a game and work on glove uh, hand drills or or various things like that you have pitchers that still work flat ground play long toss and if this is what again like i always go back to this because this is what we emulate right whether it's college kids or you know professional baseball and beyond um you know that this is what we're looking at and so if you if you want to be the next level you have to practice the next level and it starts with everything you do how you prepare for the game how you show up to the game how you play catch um i told my team the other day i said if you guys do this this throw and and chase thing um there's a good chance you're not playing the infield for me because i can't trust you to throw the ball across the diamond 
Well, what happens when you start taking appreciation and playing catch? All of a sudden, you know, the routine play just maintains being routine. You know, you, you're not worried about a kid whether or not he's going to throw it away so you don't want to look, you know. Um, and this can happen at a young age if, if we choose um, to push our players to take pride in what they do. And it can happen at nine years old. You're not going to make them run and stuff like that. That might be a little much. It may be even a little much at the higher levels. If you just take playing time away from these people, this is what I'm learning. Playing time matters more than anything to these kids. That's one way that you can get them to make an adjustment is just take that stuff away. And, you know, maybe not at the youth level because you bat rosters. So you have to be a little bit more creative when you're younger. Um, but it starts with playing catch. If you can't throw and you can't catch, you should not play the game of baseball. And it's not my job. It's actually not my, and, and I, I refuse to take ownership in this. And you may disagree, and, and most of the public may disagree. It is not my job to make sure that kid can pick, play catch. I'm supposed to teach him some better throwing mechanics. I might be able to teach him better or proper catching mechanics. But his parents, his friends, they need to play catch every day. And that I can't, I can't do that. Right. I get two days a week with my kids and one of them has got to be a hitting day. So I get one day a week. I cannot focus on playing catch for two hours properly. I, agree. you know, I agree. That has we, to happen at home. That has to be the individual. That has to be the want to of the, the player in my estimation, even that, because dad could say, Hey, let's go play catch. No, I'm playing PlayStation. No, 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 no. Then, then you don't want to play baseball in that respect. Uh, you know, I, cause you got to be able to catch the baseball. I thought one of the things that was interesting, you said there, uh, in the interview before the game yesterday, coach Nick post, the St. Louis prospects, he didn't start the season, but as they were going along, he said, we went to a play nine bat 10 roster, which means two kids are on the bench. And he said, the level of play rose because I want to be in the game. I didn't want to be that 11th or 12th guy on the bench, which I think is great. That's fantastic. That's what it is at high school baseball, folks. I know he didn't start that way, and that's fine. I, but I love as he got through the season and, and the, the things were there and it was crystallizing, you got guys, you want to be on the field, prove it. And especially, as you said, you know, some of the younger ages, it's a little more difficult and things. I get those things. But you can still only play nine. You can't put 12 guys out on the field. Uh, yeah. The roster, I understand batting the roster, but I loved what he did there. I thought it was really interesting, and and he did it as a competitive opportunity. I love that about it. and a shout-out to Coach Nick Post for that, and his teams played very well because they were moved up from AA to AAA, so they've really had to step up that, and they've played very well in these tournaments. We've seen them twice in a championship game. I know that they wanted to take it home, Fell short a couple times for us, but hey, that's that's. But they're there. They're right there. They're competing hard, and I love that. The one thing about these younger ages, Mitch, and you can talk about this. I always had a practice plan. I set and devised a plan of how I wanted to go about a practice. We did this, and the other thing that I think is very important in creating competition as well is if you're doing throwing drills, if you're doing a break and throw drill, if you're doing a step and throw drill, things of this nature, and making it a competition in the throwing drills, or any drill, maybe even that. And you don't always have to maybe give something away, but you recognize, hey, this guy's, hey guys, you want to be at the top. Maybe, hey, you get to hit third in the lineup this week, right? Uh, you get to lead off. I, uh, maybe you got a $10 gift card to Prime Sports Midwest. Uh, maybe, you know what, coach, um, I'm buying you, you a snow cone at the ball game this week, you know, because I think I, I have no problem with rewarding. It's a meritocracy. I think that, I think it's great. I think it's fine. And bringing that, if, if somebody's attitude is poor, because maybe they're not, to, are you going to work harder to work to that end? Well, that's competition. And this is the way you do. And that doesn't mean, so continue to grow, continue to work. 
I guarantee you, you will get rewarded. And then you can reward kids that you're seeing are not getting the bad attitude and they're continuing to work and getting better. And you can recognize that, hey, you know what? I saw you were uh, you you were last over, uh, you know, last couple weeks. But this next couple weeks, you've been third. You're getting better. You know what? Coach sees that I'm putting you at the top of the lineup this week. You know, those are things that work, right? It, it absolutely does. And and you, uh, there are so many coaches that probably take this for granted because it's the easiest thing to do is to just bat roster, free substitutions. Um, but you don't really have control of, of maybe the culture that you want to build. And you talk about what Coach Post did. And the first thing that you that came to my mind is what it's like to compete inside his practices to make sure that those nine or 10 kids are going to be in that lineup. And um, I said it to my group this weekend. We, we, you know, we played this, this past weekend uh, at 15 U and I, I looked at some kids. I said, we have 14 kids on our roster. It's deep. I said, you have to compete. And I, I, I played a couple of kids that had some non-competitive ABs. And I looked at them. I said, how do you want me to put you in the game when you're not competitive on the at bat side? Confidence is a thing, right? And I, I, I get that, and I understand that that may bring his confidence down, but all I'm asking is to be competitive. I've never once suggested you have to have a certain result. And so when you go through these drills and you're having these drills and a kid wins it and or, or whatever, it may be one of the weaker players on the team because there is the best on the team, there is the worst on the team. That's why you have one through 14. It is just part of the game. It's like that in the big leagues too. There's somebody that's on top and someone's on bottom. And, you know, what if that kid is just all week long, just all in on everything you do, right? You have got to reward that. And you 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 can't you you can't it doesn't have to be monetary, right? You don't have to buy them anything. You give them playing time. Absolutely. It's the things that they want the most anyways is playing time, right? So uh, if you have a kid that is working that hard, let him find a way to make sure he starts that first tournament game. He may never see bracket play, and that's fine. But his reward for his work ethic, then that builds culture so that when he's sitting in bracket play, he's chasing fly balls, he's warming up pitchers, he's doing whatever it takes to be part of the team to continue that opportunity to play. That has been the single most uh, in the last two years. I have got that kind of buy in from my guys. Sometimes they have to be reminded, but I quickly say this is why these certain people play is because they do this well. And next thing you know it, it's not an issue. And and I had great, I, I, for the most part, I have one little issue at the end of the tournament on championship, um, you know, championship Sunday. We played in a championship game of a silver bracket, and I had one young man um, that made a final out of the game. Uh, it was a great game. He was a great teammate all weekend, but have one issue. I, I can't let that slide. The one thing that I – and here's the other thing about having, you know, competitive practice and setting a practice plan is if you've got time frames set within that, this to me is really how you build culture as well because you see all these kids, they come sauntering out of the dugout, they're 12, and the coach is like, hustle out, hustle out. Shouldn't have to say that. But nope. if you're creating that in practice, where do you have to be for the next drill? Guys – we're going to be, you've got 15 minutes. you got somebody with a, with a stopwatch, with the practice plan that you can trust, a coach or, or even a parent that's over there. Hey, here's the practice plan. I want you every 15, you know, 15 minutes, we're moving to the next drill. You know, blow a horn, blow a whistle, whatever, holler out, coach, time, next one, whatever the case may be. And then everybody's got to hustle and you lay the – you lay these things out, the kids are hustling to the next one. Okay, hustle up, grab your glove, let's get over there. Grab your bat, let's get to there. Everybody knows what they're doing. All of a sudden, you're creating that pace, and you're creating pace of the game. You're creating a nice flow. You're creating that energy you want in a game. These are cultural things that I don't think many people – and and. If you haven't done it, and many a times, it, you know, as Eric Eisen calls it, daddy ball. But there's a there's a reality to some of that that they haven't 
built a practice before. How do they do that? What is the culture? What are you trying to set? And I think we need to do these things. And I'd love to. And, and I'm, I've been thinking about this, throwing it around a little bit, maybe having some clinics with coaches and inviting um, dads who coach to these to create to talk about practice plans setting culture doing these things you know whoever wants to come I think it's important if we're going to train and develop and we're using dads which I think is fine I don't think you need to pay a coach at 12 or 13 I think it's ridiculous that's just that's one man's opinion that doesn't mean I and everybody goes oh you don't like clubs that's not what I said I said, I don't think you need to pay a coach at 12, 13, even 14. There's even high school. At, I agree. If, if you got a guy that can coach, he's a father, he's a dad, and he knows what he's doing, and he's getting the job done, I've heard this and heard this, no, you don't need those dads. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, listen, I, 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 I think I, at, at I certain – I have seen at some certain, crappy coaches at that certain are not places, dads. And, and here's the other thing. How many of these young men, which I hope they're coming back, and I love it. I don't mind giving these guys opportunities. And if you're coming back and you're coaching and giving back into your community and you're getting paid for it, fantastic. You're doing instructions. Be invested. <laughs> Be invested. Set your practice plans. Do the things. If you're coaching, just so you can say you're a coach and you show up, you know, at the game with your fungo to look cool. Um, that ain't getting it done. Complete disservice to the community, baseball community. And it's, and it's probably why we have some of the issues we have. We have guys that are getting paid coaches that are not good coaches. Uh, the culture in the dugout, the culture in the stands. And I know that I, that this one drives me bonkers because there is some, is there are some groups out there that, um, have some coaches that don't deserve to, to, to coach. They don't have a high IQ. And if you don't have a high IQ, how are you supposed to teach your players uh, to make your high school teams? And, I, and I, I get that that's a strong opinion. I am a coach, and it sounds like maybe I am bashing. Well, there's some bad coaches out there, and there are some very good dad coaches. And I, I will put my money that any coach that you find out out there today that has a good quality team that plays and does the small things right. I bet their culture's good. I bet they their dugout is good. I bet their parents are understand what your culture is. And I bet you they're efficient, what you were getting at with your structure. We are creatures of habit. And so if, if we don't do these things every day, we will not be as good as we want to be. So when you have structure, uh, and you start your practice a particular way, your team can run itself. They know what is expected of them. So you don't have to spend 10 minutes trying to motivate these young people. They just know that it's expected and they'll do it. Maybe it takes a couple of times. I don't know. My first practice was last week. I told them what we were doing and I had goosebumps by the time I was done with my in and out 15 minutes in. I had scheduled a two and a half hour practice. We were done in, in an hour and 50 minutes. And I asked them, what do you guys want to do? And they were like, can we just play wiffle ball? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I mean, I'm like, I don't know yet. I didn't want nobody to throw you guys. We were playing the next day. So I, I, I didn't let them end up doing it. We did some base running stuff and went home. So they got to go home early. That was kind of the reward this, this past week. But again, like this is a 15 year old team that impressed me. They wanted to extremely work hard, but they know what my expectations are. And we did something that was new and, um, you know, we, you talk about parent coaches tonight. We have a, a 15s and 17 U's combined practice. Well, we bring we're bringing our nine U team up and they're going to watch us. We're going to play catch with them, you know, and, and do a little bit of a family kind of thing, uh, if you will. But they're going to watch us practice and they're just going to sit there and they're going to just watch. And the efficiency of it, there, these, this is for the coaching staff, right? This is mm -hmm. for the players to understand this is what the motivation is. And then our kids are going to stand with them as they take in and out. And so that they can help them moving and help them point directions. And uh, this is where I think we can grow with our youth teams is just why can't a 10-year-old have expectations? Why yeah. do you think that these kids aren't prepared? This 9U team is a very rec team. My 14U team uh, a couple years ago was a rec team. Let me say this and, real and quick. And we're playing well. 
Let me say this real quick to you, Mitch. I, I love what you said there. Why can't a 10 year old have expectations? But here's, I think this is what's problematic. This is what we see on tournament weekend. I see it a lot. I'm not bagging on anybody. It's just my, ob these are observations and I'm not pointing any one per, I'm just in a general sense. We don't set the expectation in practice. We don't set that. We don't put those things. We're not building culture. But then on game day, we're out there hollering at the kid. Why didn't you get out there? Why you got to get the cutoff and whatnot? And, and the expectation is being driven during the game when there isn't that expectation set within practice. We go out and hit some ground balls. We go through the, you know, you got to get out there. Here's your cut. But. What's the expectation? How do you set those things in place and whatnot? And you can tell those expectations aren't being set in practice because they're not being done in the game at any point. It's not at anything. And then the coach is hollering and everybody's hollering. The parents are hollering and everybody's all upset and whatnot. And the kids out there frustrated and they're hot and they just want to go home at that point. And I think this Definitely is... Definitely younger. <laughs> right? And I think these are some of the things that I see on, on a regular basis in general. And then you see these exceptions and you see coaches that are pretty fiery and you see some coaches that are laid back. I think, you know, you, you have to understand as a parent uh, if that's what if, if you don't mind the fiery and that's what you want for your kid, fine. If you don't want the fiery, whatnot, there's other coaches that are laid back. Look to that. Again, this goes back to what we've talked about and talked about and talked about. Do you know who's coaching your kid? Have you talked to him? Yep. Did you before you went to the did you did you do any kind of vetting process? You know, you're paying the money. Once you've paid the money, you need to trust those people to do what they do. Uh, you don't just get to play because you paid your money. You paid your money to go to put your kid on that team for those coaches. To, so I think it's important that you understand and know who the coaches are. What is the practice? Hey, guys, what, what, what do you got set up for practice plans? You don't pay to play. Stop it. The clubs are That's there. It. You're paying to have your child be developed and whatnot. So it's important that you understand who is in that development process. And it, and it can't stop with just the physical skills. It, it has to be between the ears too. Uh, we have to recognize those things. And I, I will, you know, one of my, uh, I'm an emotional guy uh, in general. You know, you talk about a fiery thing. Maybe it's the red hair, not sure, or lack of. I'm not. I, I don't. I don't know. You know, they they like to make fun of me because I'm a ginger and I have no soul, kind of thing. And realistically, my job is to make a good ball player, but a better young man. Mm -hmm. And this has to start at a younger age because once they get to the high school, they're gonna. I'll give you an example. This, this is this is how, uh, call it what you want. A young man, face paint, you know, all the way down, got the, the cool eye black going and everything, and, and I just shook my head, and it is what it is. Let them do their kind of thing and whatever. And somebody said, Coach, uh, why did you shake your head? And I said, I don't like it. And they said, why don't you like it? And I said, well, because I don't think you're good enough to wear it. And they looked at me. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, you, you're trying to embrace something like these college kids are, but you have a, a work ethic that's just two days a week. I don't think you work hard enough. I don't think you play well enough to wear this swag and call it what you want. They still wear it. I'm not going to tell them to take it off. I want them to feel good. You asked me my opinion. I gave it to you. It shocked you. But then they looked at me and made sure that they proved me wrong. Right. They went out and and played a little extra that day. And so I would then pull them aside and say, hey, what did it take to make you play this way? Or what will it take to make you play this way every day? Practice like this every day. Right. And he looked at me and he was like, OK, I got it. I understand. And they don't have a fear of failure when it makes mistakes. You know, they it's it's I have their attention when they're poor teammates you know, when they're, when they're bad to a teammate. And, and that is, 
that is how I feel creating this competition and this culture thing. I have to get between the ears first because if I got them to buy in, then they'll do whatever I ask them to do physically. And if I am asking a kid to lay the law, lay down on the line for her teammates, they'll understand the why. Yeah. And there's always somebody behind them that wants their job. So they have to perform. And it's just this great cycle. And I, and I had that this weekend for the most part. I, I have a young man that throws 85. He's 15 years old, throws 85, 86. So a really good slider. I didn't play him the next day, game after he had 12 strikeouts. I didn't hit him. I didn't do anything. Best teammate in there. Right? So I, I put him at DH. I wasn't ready for him to throw yet. So I put him at DH the next game, rewarded him. Well, the teammates that were behind him followed suit with him. They were all good teammates, so they got their chance to get in there. It didn't mean they were successful. It didn't mean they didn't make a mistake, right? right. But I had I had kids competing hard. I, I had a kid that throws 85, 86, then turn around and throw a kid that threw 60 poo. And guess what he did? He got outs because he threw strikes and he competed hard. But he wanted the opportunity to show me that he could pitch for me. Right. And if we have that buy-in all – through every organization, small, large, everything in between, big clubs, independents, if we can, if we as a group can just push this kind of stuff, I bet we will have more fun games. I bet we won't have as many issues in the stands. I bet we won't have as many issues with the umpires. And that is controlled by adults. It is controlled by the directors. It is controlled by the coaches. If we act like fools, our fans are going to act like fools. Our players are going to act like fools. And it, we have to do better just in general of demanding the same standards that you had growing up because they worked. Expectations, man. I, I watched a great uh, documentary yesterday afternoon. Uh, caught it. on. I was, I was finishing up working. I had to finish up all the stuff from uh, – there's some great stuff with Legion yesterday. Uh, we work a lot with Legion and, and they're starting, so we're following and, and keeping an eye on what's going on. The Ellsbury Tournament. St. Peter's post 313 won the Ellsbury Tournament uh, so, uh, yesterday. I thought it was great. Uh, local here, uh, Rick Reno. Does it, He's been with that program a long time, so congrats to the AA squad there that started this weekend. I think that's fantastic. Um, there was a Eureka Legion team in a tournament in um, – Ellisville yes. this past weekend, and they did pl they did very well. Uh, I was following Scott Blackwell, and he was tweeting about that. So, congrats! Yeah, absolutely, they're getting out. I know. I saw um, next this coming weekend when we'll be down in Springfield, um, Washington, post two eighteen. Who who has a very good program? Kent Getzey does a great job down in Washington. Uh, they're going to be in a in the game seven tournament in the fourteen U. So. There's a there's it's interesting. I like what I'm seeing. I think there's giving opportunities for kids. There's some real and Kent gets he's a good coach. He does a great job developing uh, Washington. Many of those kids that played on that Washington squad that were it was in the um, I think they won the district championship this year. Right. I, I think so. I don't yes. think they won. Yeah, the they, next did. They, won, they didn't win the quarterfinal. They got beat by, I think, Borgia. Um, but they won their district this year. A lot of those kids playing at post-218 down there with Washington and Kent Getzey's group. So Sam Pauley, I know Aiden Pekka, we've talked about those kids. Very good ball players. Um, but nonetheless, got off my subject there. <laughs> I think I lost that it. That could happen. I feel like a few times you've asked me a couple of things and I start ranting and I'm like, man, I'm way off in left field, but I'm just rolling with it because the flow felt good. Yeah, I squirreled, but that's okay. But I think it's culture that goes back to building that culture. And I believe it starts in the practice sessions, in those things. And when we talk about coaches, how, you know, if we're paying a coach, if we're in those places, are these kids, I know everybody's trying to get them, but. Talk to a dad. Maybe he's better. Maybe he's more invested. I love to. They are the, the kids. most invested. <laughs> I I want these young baseball players that are playing in college coming back. I've seen a lot of these kids coming back and umpiring. I think it's fantastic. And I'm not. Again, these are generalized situations and sometimes few and far between. But it is a matter of having a competitive practice. 
and setting those things in motion the correct way and what we're talking about within development. And I think it starts with documentary. That's right. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> I watched the documentary. There was another squirrel. <laughs> on SEC on the SEC network about Skip Bertman, LSU. And Mitch, it was about culture. How he built relationships, how he developed the culture of the team, and the thinking, the confidence, building that within the player. Not and and you know, these are all talented guys. But what what when you get when talent is talent and talent meets talent, like we're gonna see this weekend, I think you got Jackson and Francis Howell. You've got Nixa and Liberty North. You have four of of probably are they four of the best most talented teams. Liberty North, Francis Howell were ranked in the top. Uh, well, I know were ranked in the top twenty five in the preseason PBR. Uh, I think they call it. Uh, it wasn't mid Great Plains area region, which includes Texas. Oklahoma and Arkansas and we had those teams ranked in there Francis Howe and Liberty North are two of the most legit teams in this country and Jackson is right there Nixa great talent we're going to get to talk to the coaches down there I appreciate these coaches taking the time to come we're going to be down there doing our podcast we're looking forward to it Mitch how they got there is culture building that culture setting those things in place, doing those things. When you have talent meeting talent, there's got to be a separator. And it's usually 100%. the culture. It, yes, and it, and it's who, who has the buy-in uh, of what that coach's expectations are. I mean, he's the one that is in charge of this group. And, you know, when I look at some of these coaches, I, I'm, I'm looking at guys that demand, you know, they, they, they have the support from the school. They have support from their parents that their demands are extremely high. And I mean, just this is to, because I don't, because I know him the most and coach Perkins, you have a guy like Norfleet, what 11, 12 home runs or whatever he had this year, nine. So I know that he was up there. How many times has he bunted this year? You know, I, I've seen him in four or five games at least put a bunt down or an attempt in a bunt in a game. In the in the few games that I I've had the luxury of watching that young man swing, he is six, what eight, two hundred and twenty, thirty pounds, hits four hundred foot bombs. You know, as a high school kid, and he's been doing that for a while, and he bunts. <laughs> How frustrating as a competitive person is it to have to bunt? And you can do this magic. You can you can hit three. You, you can drive in three runs in one swing, you know. But yet, the most important thing is is putting a bunt down, getting runners in second and third. And that young man will turn around, be unhappy that he had to bunt, but turn around and understand that was the expectation. That was what he's called for, and get the job done. To your point, you know, two weekends ago, we're at a fourteen U ball game. Young man bunts. Execute it, moves the runner over, comes off the field screaming, I don't want to bunt. Flips his helmet, throws it into the dugout, sits down all in a huff, throwing everything. Uh, I'm just saying. And that... And here well, is. Well, I'll just say it out loud. That young man would be not playing the next weekend for me, and he might have to find a new team. I don't understand why we don't set any expectations for that. I, I just because don't it, get it. Again, it starts with the coaches. It the does. coaches allow that to happen. And, and 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 why don't they want to do that so that they keep a player there so they can make money? This is this is why parents I think complain so much that everything's a money grab. Because they have these these things that are happening, and I, and I, I I will I will beg to differ that this thing is a money grab. I can't tell you I made more money in the banking world than I ever have in club sports. I lose money. I have to take pay cuts 
because because of all of the variables that are that are in this this sport and I, I for for the life of me no it's not about stealing people's money or taking people's money or whatever they think that we're actually doing it feels that way when you have situations like that you know right. I, I i i i it, this thing is hard. This, this to be a club owner is hard. To be a, a facility owner is difficult. I do not want your kid's money. I want your kid to be better. And if if and that starts with you guys as parents, us as coaches, us as directors, and the player gets rewarded for all of that. In my opinion. And folks, I, I want to say this, and I ought to put this up. I ought to do this right before we do these things. Um, but, you know, uh, the opinions and comments of YBM, of YBM cast and its host does not necessarily reflect those of their sponsors. And I want to make sure people, you know, know that right off the bat. Um you know, I, I just do uh, because these are things we I want to be honest and open about what we talk about, because as everybody, if you don't know me, I think 99 percent of what goes on for the most part is pretty up and up and does well and things of that nature. But I think there is a small percentage of things. But I do think there are things we can always get better at. And I think this is one of them in building culture. And if we can help and, and this is why. We're talking about this, and Mitch knows this, and I tell him this all the time. He'll bring up subjects, and I go, do you have a solution? <laughs> because I'm a solutions guy. I don't believe in just ranting for the sake of ranting. I don't believe it. I don't even believe in talking about these things without a solution. My solution is I want to. I hope that clubs, and I know some of these clubs are doing this. They have it bringing coaches in to um, talk to dad coaches, to other coaches, to learn how to set up a practice plan, to do these things. And then if the coach doesn't do it, then it's on them, and then we have other issues to deal. And there's only so much you can control, and that's that's the way you do. But I also want to add to it, I'm hoping to do this in the future, that we can create some opportunities for some clinics uh, with YBM and keep working on these things because I do think we need to change the culture a little bit here with the club ball and uh, – Settle it back down a little bit that way and bring those, which I know the clubs are doing. I love to work with, uh, I love working with the clubs and talking to the guys. I think there's some great guys out there doing good things for it. Mitch is one of them. That's why I have him here on this. I I like what, um, you know, Matt Shadow, we've been working together. He comes, he's been contributing on the show. His, his program's growing. And I love having, uh, we've talked with, um, Chris Craddock on a number of occasions, Gators. Uh, we've been down with all of our um, winter workout tours with the Naturals, with the St. Louis Redbirds, uh, Basta and his group. Um, uh, we've Quincy. been with, yeah, up in Quincy. We've been with the recruits, uh, Todd Stein, Dave Wiggins, what those guys do over there. I love that. So there's there's a lot of guys that understand these things. And so I'm hoping that as we continue to talk, and, and I hope parents listening, Mitch, as you know, understand what we're talking about and take these things to heart, right? Yeah. My goal when I and – I'm, and I think this is why we get along uh, pretty well for the most part. Uh, we agree on things. <laughs> uh, is that we're trying to just give information um, to help out these these folks it's not to say what they're doing is wrong i understand that if a call doesn't go your way there's some emotion involved in it especially if it's a high energy game uh great competition going on and it's low scoring or high scoring but it's a close ball game i get that there's sometimes a little bit of back and forth between parents you know maybe one way that one parent cheers or you know the 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 whole thing about we got a guy there now you know when you a kid hits a pop-up or um, don't hit it there kind of routines. That, that kind of stuff is fun. And um, it, it, it's, it's good to have some of that little back and forth, but we, we can't be the parent that is, that is always griping about every single little call. Um, a lot of the things that they're griping about are judgments. They don't understand the, the judgments 
rules. Um, and this is why I say things like I encourage my parents to go look up and read the rule book. Um, you know, maybe not all of it because some of it you may never have, will ever see. Um, but there's a ton of situations. And we talked about something off air, I think, last week about a play that happened to you. I actually brought that up to an umpire uh, out on the field as we were just hanging out. And um, it, it just was good conversation. And a lot can happen uh, and the games can go great uh, if you just – just it's a game mm -hmm. let them boys have fun let them mm -hmm. learn from their coaches let the coaches coach you 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 hired a coach to to teach your athletes that's the you should have done a better job if you don't like your coach because he's mean or too soft or whatever you want to call it you should have done a better job of vetting who your coach was it's something that we always talk about on this thing and um just I, I, I just want better for the baseball community. I would love to sit down at a round table. Maybe this is an opportunity of the biggest organizations that are around here to set certain things um, like tryout dates. You know, we're already seeing them posted. Um, that's something I'd love to talk about as a round table of um, coming together and understanding what we're doing, you know, um, and, and encouraging parents just. That's a big squirrel. <laughs> Well, I, I just, it's just, it's on my mind just because I feel I like as, as a director, it's, it's just not, we're not doing a good enough job. We'll get, Mitch, here's one thing I want, and because we're getting, we're getting short on time, but I want to say this, you know, you've seen this and whatnot. I just wish coaches, coaches be more professional. If you're a dad or whatnot, when we're talking and dealing with, you know, stop with the, uh, you know, especially as you brought up umpires and things of that nature and how we're acting and how we're conducting ourselves. Quit telling the umpire, that's three you owe me. That's three you owe me. Well, what about the 10, what about the 10 errors your team just had? You know, and just because you say it's, it's a bad call or a wrong call doesn't mean it is. And then you're saying that and then all the parents are like, oh, yeah, that's three. We can't get a call Stop it. It's youth baseball. Your kids just made 10 errors and overthrow the cutoff guy 20 times, and it's 20 to nothing because your team isn't playing well, not because the three you owe me. I'm sorry. I just am so tired of seeing that. And from either side, I can't, as, a, as an official, I couldn't look at the coach and say, Coach, you know, your kids are making 20 errors. What, you know, I... I may or not. It may. It was a close call, but that's what I called, and I may have missed one. That's a. That's a reality. That's. There's possibility of that. It is what it is. Don't do that. Focus on the team. Focus on the kids. Focus on those things that you can control. If the umpire isn't quite as good, you can say you can go in a very nice way to the tournament director and say, "Hey." Guys, I, you know, these were a couple things I saw in the game with the umpires. Just wanted to let you know. And I guarantee you, most tournament directors, if they're honest, which the guys we work with are, they will address it. That's the best you should do. Let's focus on those things. Let's, let's, let's put ourselves in that. And honestly, uh, before we get away, remember, competitive practices. I want to get back to that setting those things that's what we taught that's where we started being competitive yes. in practice so uh, i know watch uh, how far it'll go watch just watch how far it'll go because next thing you know it they'll be competitive for their jobs they'll be competitive for their grades they'll be competitive in life uh i i love running a competitive practice because it's efficient and it gets it, it as a coach we can't compete anymore so when you can get your team to buy into this awesome practice, you walk away from it happy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what that's what our goal should be when we leave a practice is saying we got stuff accomplished today. And you have to have that. I have outlines. Like if 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 you want to, like I hopefully you have a few minutes, but I will start the day with about three minute conversation, and usually that three minutes has to do with the sports specific quote of the day. Yeah. So every practice has a little quote of the day or something that I'll talk about and then start the energy there. We run stretch throw. It is the same routine. And I know it's monotonous, but again, creatures of habit, the practice, the skill stuff will change, but our in and outs and our daily work 
always will be the same. We'll have learned something new for the day. We'll end with another quote that I'll leave those with. It happens all the time and it's, and it, and it works. And set competitions within drills. I think there's, there's nothing wrong with that, especially with the younger kids. I think it, it puts that mindset there. It's a great tool. It's a great learning tool. We need to use it. Game Mitch. recognizes game, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Mitch, that was a fun one. Enjoyed that one a lot. I uh, hope uh, people enjoyed that. Um, guys, check out uh, all the action from the Memorial Day Classic, Game 7 Baseball Memorial Day Classic on the website. Lauren's got the link in there. Check that out. Congrats to all the champions. We got some great stuff. We had some great interviews. We'll have, we should have Dave Pinning on next week when we're back from the state championships. We'll have a lot of fun. We'll talk to Dave. We'll get some updates on what's going on with Game 7 Baseball. Until then, folks, we'll see you from, uh, we'll, 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 we'll be around uh, for the state championships. We're looking forward to it. Mitch, you enjoy. Have a good day. Keep working hard, bro. It's hot. <laughs> Thanks, i appreciate everybody absolutely everybody have a great day in the lord all you pitchers keep throwing strikes and hitters keep it between the lines there you go that's even better advice i like that one keep it fair hit safely i like that we'll see y'all next time <laughs>